Paragon Software Group is a leading provider of disaster recovery, virtualization, migration, deployment, and system optimization solutions since 1994. We help our customers reduce server downtime and improve their backup and DR strategy, leverage and manage virtual environments, and improve the performance of their storage systems, data centers, and applications by optimizing partition structures and alignment. Welcome to Paragon Software Group's Dry Backup 10 Server Product Overview. This is a four-part series that will review the features and functionality of the Dry Backup Server application. These features include the creation of sector and file level backups, differentials and incrementals, creating a backup capsule, creating synthetic and cyclic backups, virtualization, disk and partition copying, scheduling and scripting, working with Paragon Archives, the different types of recovery media, our ability to restore to dissimilar hardware using our adaptive restore technology, and finally our add-on components, which comprise of our granular recovery for exchange and our remote management application. This is part one of the four-part series. Today we're going to focus on these four aspects of the Drive Backup application. Launching the application brings up the main interface. This interface will provide us access to all the features we'll be discussing today. The first topic we'll discuss today are sector and file level backups. From the side menu under Basic Backup and Restore Tasks, we select the Smart Backup Wizard. We then click Next on the Welcome screen. This brings up the Smart Backup menu. From here we select Disks or Partitions. This is our sector-based backup. From here we get to select what we want to backup. We can select individual partitions or we can choose to backup the entire disk. If multiple disks are present, we can select the backup more than one disk or any combination of partitions and disks. Now we choose where we're going to be backing up to. We can select anything that's locally attached, like USB, eSATA, or FireWire, or internal drives, or we can backup to network locations like NAS devices or file servers. We can also send images offsite via FTP, or we can backup to optical media like CD, DVD, including Blu ray disc. On the backup destination screen, we get to select where we're going to actually save the archive. We can also change the archive name. On the next screen, we're provided three options in which we can choose how to start the backup. Our first option is to backup now. We can schedule a backup to run at a later date and time. Or we can choose to generate a script, which I'll discuss in greater detail later on in the demo. By clicking Next and then Finish completes the backup wizard. Going back to the Smart Backup menu, we're going to now take a look at the file level backup options. Our pre-configured options are Email, where we'll back up your Outlook, Outlook Express, and Windows Mail. Media files, which include my photos, videos, and music, which are contained in the My Documents directory. The Documents option backs up all major file types for documents like PDFs and Word documents contained within the My Documents directory. And finally, other files and folders. This option gives us the ability to pick and choose what directories and files that we want to back up. The options for backup destination and how we'd like the backup to run are the same as the sector level backup. Differentials and Incrementals we launch the Differential Backup Wizard from the side menu under the Advanced Backup Tasks section. We again click Next past the Welcome screen. We next select the existing base, partition, or disk archive in which we're going to make the differential comparison against. The drop down menu allows us to change focus from partitions to disks so we can select the correct archive to do the comparison on. If a disk image is selected, we'll have the options to pick and choose which partitions we're going to do the differentials on. Once selections are made, the options for where to save the archive to and how to start the backup process are identical to the full partition or disk backup. Incremental file based backups. To launch this wizard, we again go back to the advanced backup tasks menu. On the following screens, we are asked to provide an existing file based archive to make the comparison with. Once again, the archive destination and scheduling options are identical. Creating a backup capsule. To find the Backup Capsule Wizard, we go to the Tools section of our side menu and select Manage Backup Capsule. This wizard will help you create a backup capsule, which is a hidden partition or container that can be used to store backups. 
Similar to a factory restore partition, the backup capsule can be made bootable by setting one of the F keys as a hot key during the system startup to start the recovery process. Synthetic and cyclic backups. Again, under the tools section of the side menu, we have the option for the synthetic backup. The synthetic backup allows us to take an existing backup or an existing full and differential, and in that case, combine the two, and compile an entirely new backup with different parameters. For instance, if it was originally split, we can unsplit the file or vice versa. We can change the compression level or we can encrypt or decrypt by adding or removing passwords. The synthetic backup does not delete the original source image. It just creates an entirely new one based on the parameters that you provide. The next item under the tools side menu we'll be discussing is the cyclic backup. Cyclic backup is a managed partition backup. So in addition to what you're going to backup, where you backup to, how often the backup will run, you get to set some additional parameters, like whether you're going to do a basic type, which will be a full image each time, or a differential type, which will create one full and then differentials after that. Then you get to set some additional parameters, like how many images you're going to retain and how much space you're going to be managing. In this example, it's always going to retain the two most recent images. It'll keep cycling through that so you always have the two most current. If the next image that will be created will exceed the maximum space allotted, it will actually reduce the overall number of images it's going to keep. So if it can't do two images, it'll keep one, basically staying within both parameters, the size and the number of images. This concludes part one of the Drive Backup 10 server overview. Please view the remaining parts of this video series to see all the features and functionality that Drive Backup 10 server has to offer. For additional information including sales, or if you would like to receive an evaluation copy of the software, please contact us at 888-347-5462 or email us at sales underscore USA at paragon-software.com. Thank you for viewing this Paragon Software Group presentation.